Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am excited to share another haul. This is a big haul from Jerry's. Um, I had some birthday money to spend, so I have a couple of hauls. Um, I'm hoping to get some stuff from Jackson's too, and there's a couple of Amazon things coming as well. But this one's from Jerry's Adorama, which I love. They have some really good value uh, paints and brushes and things. So um, yeah, let's get started. Okay, so let's open this first one here. Um, I've been watching a beautiful artist called Natasha Newton. You should go check out her channel if you haven't seen her artwork. It's just beautiful and she seems like such a lovely person. Um, very calming videos, really informative, super talented. Anyway, she uses um, a lot of acrylic gouache and you can get like nice thick layers and if you let them dry, they don't move afterwards like a traditional gouache. So I was really interested in trying some out. Um, she uses the Holbein gouache, but it's a little too expensive for me right now and I just wanted to try a couple out. So the Turner acrylic gouache um, is a cheaper version, but I'm hoping that it'll still perform similarly. So I'm hoping to give that a go. So I think there's some more in here, so I'll open these guys up. So we got a couple more. So I think there's some more in here. So let's open this guy. Oh, we have a watercolor. Well, we'll look at that guy later. Okay, so we got a couple more. And then this one. Oh, nope, this is something different. We'll come back to that one. But this one has Turner, so I'm thinking there's more in here. Oh yeah, so these are just the, the whites. Okay, so what colors do we have here? We have one Japanese one. Japanese. I think this one is a little different. This one has a bit of texture to it, as I understand. So it has a little bit of um, grittiness to it. Uh, so I don't know how it performs differently to these guys, but it was such a beautiful color that I just wanted to try that out too. So we have a jet black, a turquoise blue, an aubergine, a burnt sienna, a joan brilliant, or I don't actually know how to say that, and two whites. Because um, as I understand with gouache, you tend to mix quite a bit with the whites. So hopefully that gives a interesting palette. Um, I'll swatch all these guys after we've unboxed everything and we can check out the colors then. Okay, so let's move these to the side. And open up our other packages. Um, let's go with this one. Ooh, yes. Okay, so these are some watercolors. Um, I haven't tried anything from this brand before, the Van Gogh, but it's very reasonably priced and I looked at a bunch of different swatches online and, I, and they looked really nice. So I think I have some more in here. Maybe we'll open another one of these and see if there's more. I think I bought six Van Gogh. And these are all colors. Oh, nope, that's a different one too. We'll open him later too. Maybe it's in this one. And a cute little Potter's Pink by Windsor Newton. All right, so let's see. So we've got six different ones here. I got a Indian Yellow, a Titanium Buff, a Naples Yellow Red, an Indigo, a Neutral Tint, and a Sepia. Uh, so these, I don't have any of these colors right now in my current collection. Um, and I have t a little set of 18 Turner watercolors and then someone gifted me a set of the Marie's, um, which are really pretty cheap brand um, from Amazon. You can get it at Jerry's too, but they're actually quite good. I, I've been enjoying using them, but I just wanted a couple of other colors, um, you know, just convenience colors actually. And I really wanted to try the titanium buff just cause it looks interesting um, for different colorings. And I have some sepia ink, but I wanted to try the watercolor. And indigo, I tried to mix up a couple of indigos for myself um, and got some awesome colors out of it. Uh, but I'm not 100% sure what indigo really looks like. So 
this is a pretty cheap brand um, or very reasonably priced brand so I thought I'll grab it in this and see what it really looks like and compare it so I'm super excited to try those out and then we have this little guy Potter's Pink which I think was about six dollars whereas these I think are about three dollars and it's even a smaller I think this is a five mil and I think these are 10 or 15 yeah 10 mils so half as much for twice as much money so I think I saw a swatching or a comparison for the Potter's Pink um, on the Mystery Arts channel and she did five or six different brands of uh, Potter's Pink and I really liked the Daniel Smith and the Windsor Newton brand and I think the Windsor Newton were the first um, to make the Potter's Pink so I really wanted to try that one and just see how beautiful it really is. And then we have this Windsor Newton's Alizarin Crimson. This is a huge one. Um, this is 15 mils. So this was on one of the try it, buy it and try it. So I think this was only a couple of dollars um, and I don't have an Alizarin Crimson. So I really wanted to try that out. So that was a good deal. So that's all the watercolors that I got. So let's push those to the side. And then what's in these mystery packets? I saw that there was bubble wrap in there, but I can't remember what I got. Oh, I remember these. These are the Derwent Ink Tense blocks. So I've been doing a bunch of research into uh, watercolor pencils and other watercolor media just so that I can sort of try out different textures, try out different techniques. So I really wanted to get my hands on a couple of these just to see, you know, you can lay them down dry and then you can wet them or you can use these as little uh, blocks that you just wet with your brush and paint directly with them. Or you can shave them on there. You can do all different things with these. So I was super interested just to try a couple out and see um, how they worked and how to incorporate them into my work. Um, I think we have... I believe this one is a bark. I think this is bark. Um, I think this one is indigo. I think this one is fern, as I remember. And then this one, shoot. I don't know which one this is. I'm going to have to look it up and come back when we do the swatching. I will have a look um, what they were. But on my receipt that I got, it just had the item number and the name. It didn't have the name of the color. So I kind of forgot. <laughs> I mean, this is either bark or this is bark. Um, but one of these is a, another sort of yellowy brown color. Yeah, so I'm excited to try those out. It'll be fun swatching it. Put this in the pile, the birthday pile. And this, oh, how I wish it was Caran d'Ache, but it's not. They just put them in there. <laughs> uh, I went for some cheaper options. Um, I am thinking about investing in some Caran d'Ache. Um, the Luminance pencils look beautiful. Again, Natasha Newton uses though, and I'm really inspired by her work. So um, I am interested in getting those, but I just wanted to try these Soho Urban Artist ones. These are... Um, I think 98 cents each which seems like a super cheap price I don't know how they perform but I thought I would just get a couple of them and try them out so I got a sepia and a pink coral I really want to create a comfortable palette that I love working with so I have tended to gravitate towards more of the neutral tones you know the natural stuff and then I've always loved pinks for that pop of um, color so I'm hoping these will be fun to play with. Um, I'm not sure about the texture. I always think of sort of pencils as being um, not that easy to work with, but that's just because I have no experience with them. And then this guy is a Derwent Pastel. So this is in coral um, as well. I think, was that a coral? Yeah, pink coral. Um, so this is a pastel. So it's, it's sort of a more chalky, kind of pencil so I'm interested to try that too I didn't want to invest in a bunch of them without knowing if I like this medium so I just chose sort of an accent color uh, pencil to see how that works out and how it plays out so that will be fun and then oh gosh another one I did get a lot of stuff 
yeah, I had a, I had a hundred dollars to spend and I think I spent the whole lot. <laughs> but that's what birthday money's for. I'm so excited. I'm pretty frugal throughout the year and tend to just buy art supplies when I have um, like a birthday or an anniversary or something. Oh, so this is my splurge. I ended up getting the, the Daniel Smith, uh, I think it's the Soda Light. Um, I got a little sample one, a little uh, quarter pan or mini pan from Etsy and I loved it. It, it is amazing color. It's sort of this granulating grayish sort of bluish color, um, more on the sort of the gray tone and it's really beautiful. So I thought, you know, I could just cut a chunk of this, put it in a little pan and just use it when I need it. So I was excited about trying out this uh, crayon form too, rather than the tubes, just to see how that went. And then these are just white, uh, extra soft pastels. So similar to the coral um, pencil here, I think it's the same kind of medium. It's that pastel chalky um, thing that makes your um, hairs on the back of your neck go up. But these look really soft and, and smooth, already coming off a lot. So they look beautiful actually. And these were the um, buy it and try it. So I think these were about, uh, about $2 or something just to try these guys out. So I'm excited to try those too. And then this here was a freebie for my birthday. So they gave me this one for free. I don't really know what it is. It's a permanent markers. So I guess it's kind of like, uh, maybe like a Sharpie. Although I don't know how big the, the tips are here. So we'll, have, we'll sample that later when we do the swatching and see what that's like. And then in here, So this brush was another freebie for my birthday. You got to choose two items. They had, I think, this brush, those pens, uh, these pens, and maybe another couple of brushes, and then a whole bunch of like training videos, which I wasn't really interested in. So I kind of just grabbed these two as they seemed the most interesting things. <laughs> so this is a, a Squirrel Creative Mark uh, six round. So I can always use a six round. Um, this should be really nice. So that was a nice little freebie. I think it was about a five or six dollar brush. So that was nice. And I also got five dollars off for my birthday too. So they gave me a five dollar coupon and then two freebies, which was fun. Um, so these guys were the buy it and try it offer as well. So I think they were around two dollars, two or three dollars. Um, and they're, I think they're paint markers. Yeah, metallic paint markers. So let's see. Oh yeah, so this is kind of a fine tip. So it's one of those shake it and um, get the ink flowing kind of a Posca paint, but metallic. So they should be interesting too. So I think that's my entire haul. So I guess I'll be back with some swatching. Okay, so I lied. We're not going on to swatching just yet. I totally forgot that I ordered um, some paper in this haul as well. I got totally overwhelmed by the magic of the, the paints and the drawing materials that I forgot that I ordered this lovely paper. Um, so just a couple of different uh, wood pulp papers. I got a Fabriano watercolor square, which is super fun. Uh, it's an eight by eight. Um, I'm really interested in creating something in a square format. It's super textured if you can see here, which is really interesting. I haven't worked with something with so much texture and um, I think this brand is pretty good, but maybe it's only good for the cotton paper. So I'm going to try this paper pulp and see how it goes. Just see a different format. And it's a huge pad. And I think it was maybe around $7 or something or $8. So it seemed pretty reasonably priced. And then I just got this giant 12 by 18 XL watercolor pad, uh, Canson XL watercolor. And this is also uh, no cotton in this one, just the wood pulp. Um, and I know it's a student grade paper, but I actually really like it. I've been working on the 9x12 pad um, ever since I kind of started this watercolor journey. So I'm kind of used to how it reacts and works with the watercolors and bleeds and uh, lifts and stuff. So I'm kind of used to this paper and I like how it works. And I don't really do like um, really intricate botanical illustrations or anything that need the hot press and stuff. I tend to work pretty wild and... Uh, free so I like this paper. I think it's perfectly fine. Uh, I think it's one of the best student grade or wood pulp 
kind of papers out there. So I'm really excited to have this huge format to kind of break free. And I, I just love the fact that it's um, so reasonably priced. I mean, this was on sale, I think, for $10 for 30 pages at 12 by 18, which is a great deal. Um, I can even cut it up into smaller pieces if I don't end up using the big format. But I just love that it's so reasonably priced that you don't really have to feel precious about it. So you can just let your creativity flow. If the artwork doesn't turn out the way you want, at least you've learned something. And this allows me just to feel a little freer and not have the pressure of creating an amazing masterpiece and feeling, oh, I've wasted, you know, X amount of dollars on this expensive paper. So I really like um, having this, the freedom of this cheaper paper. So that's it for the haul guys. I hope you enjoyed opening these presents as much as I did. Um, I decided to separate the swatching from this whole video just because it was another 40 minutes and I felt like it was too long. So if you want to check that out, I'll post it right here and you can click and watch that. Um, otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Thank you.